Good morning, afternoon, or evening, and thank you for jumping back into Lamb's Cryptoverse. And before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe to us. It's important to do that because if you don't do that, I cannot make these videos anymore. So let's get started. The title of this presentation is rather unique, and I think it's really important that we emphasize this. The title is Macro is Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is macro. So what do I mean by that? Well, I, I'm more of a top down guy. It's very important to look at things bottoms up and in detail, but not all the time. You cannot get caught up in that. What I started doing a while ago, I, actually, it's, it's been about 10 years now, is writing a diary about the markets and other things. And let me tell you why because I would hear good news, I'd be really excited about it. And then the next day, or a week later, whenever it is, more news comes out, and then you forget about that really, really good fundamental news that came out the prior week or whenever it was. So that's why it's very important to, to write everything down, and not just do that. After you write everything down, including some of the details, but mostly top-down stuff. After you do that, you need to have like a, a framework. You need to make a framework of where we were, where we are, and where we've gone. Not because you want to prove that you're right. Hey, I, got, I predicted this, and I got A right, and B right, and C right, all con in consecutive uh, terms. No, it's not that. It's to change it as you go and to keep you thinking. It's good to have good fundamental analysis and technical and top and bottom up analysis, but you need and strong conviction, but you should always be testing it. So you need to test your conviction without losing confidence. I know it's kind of like a balance and it's taken me years to do that. I'm finally getting close to doing that. But the key thing here is to write a diary and keep a framework. So let's get started on this short presentation. This is Lamb's Cryptoverse. And yeah, that's my lamb somewhere in the universe. But look at what's behind it. There's all these dots, these stars. But I like to think of them as dots. And what I do is connect the dots. So that's the key thing. Gather all the dots, get rid of the noise, keep the signals of the dots, and then connect them and make a thesis out of them. So macro is Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is macro. And so when macro is doing well, you can be assured that the rest of the uh, fundamental liquidity and asset environment is doing well, and vice versa. So what you want to look at, there's a million things you can look at, but I think the number one thing to look at is what's called the Dixie. And it doesn't have to be the Dixie index. It could be anything else. Basically, it's a U.S. dollar index. So it's important to look at treasuries, but treasuries acting weird now. They're not acting as it's supposed to act, which is as a safe haven because the Fed, as you know, is in this tightening cycle. So the number one uh, index to watch is the U.S. dollar. Whenever the U.S. dollar is rising, that means there's tight liquidity. And right now, the U.S. dollar is rising at one of the most rapid paces in history. So that means that financial conditionings, not just the United States, because remember, the U.S. dollar is a global reserve currency. So that means there's tighter and tighter and choking liquidity all over the world. So the current global economic regime, as I said, is one of tightening liquidity. Bitcoin reflects the long-term currency debasement and also re reflects user growth. So don't get that mixed up with the short term. And also don't, don't get that mixed up with today's inflation rate of whatever it is, eight, nine percent. It's a little different. And you have to differentiate that with the long-term currency debasement of U.S. dollar. And at the same time, I'm telling you the U.S. dollar is strong. But remember, we're the strongest of the week, meaning global currencies are debasing all over the world. So the U.S. dollar is stronger than those, but it's, you know, the best of the worst, right? 
Uh, in short term, it's important to look at Bitcoin, watch Bitcoin versus S&P. The Bitcoin is highly correlated with the S&P and NASDAQ. It doesn't really matter which one. Remember, there's a lot of growth stocks in S&P, like, like the, fang, the old FANGs, Facebook, Alphabet, whatever, Meta, Metaverse. And so the S&P is moving like the NASDAQ. The point here is that this has a high correlation, especially when uh, markets decline. Remember, there's, a, there's an old saying that when markets decline, the correlation coefficient moves towards one. And that's what you're seeing between uh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and uh, equity indices, indices, indexes. And interest rates, of course, affect liquidity. And we talked about the dollar already. So we need a leading indicator. I already told you one of the most important indexes, and that's the Dixie or the U.S. dollar index. It could be any dollar index, as long as you're looking at the, at the dollar. So we need an indicator. So what could that be? What economic indicator could that be? And there must be like 100 indicators out there. I look at every single indicator that comes out. There's two types, the soft indicators and hard indicators. So the hard indicators are ones that you hear about mostly in the news. This is um, industrial production, auto sales, inventories, consumer spending. I mean, you name it, there's so much data. And you could go on to uh, the Market Watch and they have a calendar of all of these uh, economic indicators. Not only is there a calendar, but they tell you what the estimate is, you know, the consensus and what it was in the prior months. It's a very good indicator. And the Wall Street Journal, other companies, news media companies do similar calendars. So the one I like is an old fashioned one because now there's a whole bunch of versions of this, this the, the, the flash versions, right? But basically what I like to look at is the original one. And this is what was originally called the Purchasing Managers Index, the PMI. So now people call it the ISM PMI, it has a few names. But basically this is the original index that did a survey of purchasing managers. And this is what you call a soft economic indicator. Now, why do I like this versus the hard economic indicators? Because the hard economic indicators, unfortunately, like the one uh, Jerome Powell was looking at at the Fed, like the CPI and the PCE, price uh, deflator, those indicators are lagged. This indicator is one of the best leading indicators. As a matter of fact, I expected it to decline substantially by now, and it hasn't. It was, and you can see here, 52.8 in August, which is flat with, Jul with July. I'm expecting this indicator, this index, to decline substantially. And I think there's going to be a hard landing. So I think this is going to go down to, for now, let's just call it the 40s. And, and that's a really low level. And I, I think it's going to happen soon. I've been incorrect about this. I expect this index to, to be lower than 50 by this time. You remember the 50 line marks the difference between um, growing economic activity and declining. It might be a little lower. There's this two red lines they look at. There's a soft red line and a hard red line. I think it's 50 and 48. But my point is this is the indicator that you should look at to determine if the economy is slowing down. And then if, it's, if it slows down, you know we're gonna get closer to a Fed pivot. And what do I mean by that? Meaning at some point in the next few months, I think the Fed's gonna stop raising rates. And then the Fed may actually start loosening and uh, lowering interest rates and loosening liquidity. And that's when macro is gonna take off, meaning Bitcoin, and long duration assets like uh, Kathy Wood stocks are going to soar. So you're going to see those stocks, growth stocks, along, along with crypto and altcoins going to start soaring. So it's very important to look at this index. Uh, that was my little spin there. Yes, it's a great leading economic indicator. So let's go to the next one. OK, this is what some respondents were saying last month. You know, you could read these on your own, but basically some of them were saying 
that everything looks good. Some were saying that demand is still strong. But what I was reading in between the lines, if you read each of these carefully, is that yes, there's a backlog of, of orders. Yes, there's been some chip shortages. Yes, there's been strong demand, but they're all noticing that there's a let up in either that demand or orders or even inventories. Like if you see one of these quotes actually says inventories are far too high and we're on pins and needles to see how quickly and at what magnitudes uh, things are going to change. And this is what Elon Musk alluded to. Elon Musk he's amazing because he's not just uh, a, a genius or some would say wacko, but Elon Musk not just knows engineering and he's a genius and a little crazy, but he knows the economy too. And he thinks that there's a train wreck coming. So I think he's right. But he's, he, he, like myself, have been a cat at a curve in that regard. And speaking of um, being ahead of a curve, besides ISM index, if there's anything you should look at, it's the upcoming uh, earnings announcements. Now remember, I'm filming this around the end of September. So at around October 1st, October 2nd, the ISM PMI index is going to come out. So it's really important. And at the same time, maybe a few days later, you're going to get the release of third quarter earnings. Now, uh, as you probably know, it's not important to know what the actual earnings are and if the earnings were beat. What's important is the guidance and what the ma managements are saying during the conference calls. And this is what some managements have already said. As you, as you remember, during the second quarter, Walmart and, and Target noticed some slowing, but I think a lot of that was COVID related. Uh, and But some of the more recent uh, news that's worrisome to me, that's come out in the last few weeks, I'm trying to look here to see which one it was, is uh, in, uh, international paper and some packaging companies. The analysts, the sell side analysts that follow them have noticed there's an inventory glut. And we also saw there's a glut of lumber because the housing indus industry is crashing because uh, the mortgage rate has more than doubled over the last few months. And recently, the, le the most important news item that came out, and I made a video on this, you could, you could get it later. I think it, I'm going to put it at the end of the video, is uh, FedEx. FedEx said that there's an uh, uh, upcoming worldwide recession. Remember, remember, this is an industry bellwether. It's been around forever. And they're saying that they're seeing a, a, a reduction in shipping volume. So that tells you a lot. So let's see what they say for third quarter earnings. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be listening to uh, UPS's conference call and some other companies. I think it's really important to uh, see what bellwethers are saying. And I think that's everything. Let's, yeah. So let's go over the key takeaway. As I said earlier, Bitcoin reflects macroeconomic data. They like the ref, they're reflexive of each other. And if you don't know what I mean, take a look at George Soros's book, The Alchemy of Finance. I think it's the best book written on people that want to think about the market. If you just want to like do fundamental analysis, of course, Graham and Dodd. But I'm a George Soros guy, all through and through. So remember, everything's going to follow macro. So just follow, just listen to those indicators, the dollar, uh, liquidity, and the global financial index. Thank you very much for listening, and please like us.